Hello everyone, this is Alejandro and in this tutorial we will see how we can create a 3D eye concept like the one that you can see here. We will learn how to build those shapes using different techniques like the vector editing and also the modeling tools. Yeah, let's see how we can build something like this. In this particular video we will see how we can create this icon. This tutorial is going to be focused on the modeling tools, but I want to quickly show you how you can also do this icon using the vector tools. So I'm going to delete this rectangle and then I'm going to select the shape tool here and then I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to start creating a shape in here. Then we adjust the shape again here a little bit. And then uh, we have some round corners for everyone. And then we set these ones, these ones, these ones, holding shift by the way. And then we can change the roundness of these individual points. Quickly, we already have the shape and then we can add extrusion and then we can add bevels. By the way, you can also import an SVG vector and then you can just extrude this shape so it can be even faster. All right, so now that you know that you can create this type of shapes using vectors, I want to show you the focus of this tutorial, which is uh, how to create a similar shape using the modeling tools. And the reason for this is because I think it's very important that you can learn uh, about modeling because this way you can acquire knowledge that you can use not just for icons, but also to model more complex objects like characters or any other type of object. All right, so let's begin again. Okay, so the first step is to disable this rectangle and I also want to disable the helpers because I don't need those. Then I'm going to create a cube and then I'm going to reset its position so it's right on the middle. Now I want to make it more wide, something like this, and a little thinner in the C direction, something like that. Then I want to make it uh, everything a little more smaller, that will work and then move it to the top. Now I want to convert this into a subdivision surface and increase the subdivision level. I also want to move this part here a little to the top because there will be some angle, something like that to work. So now I want to start adding more uh, subdivisions right here in the middle using the lab cup tool. So one there, another there, and another there. Then I'm going to slide these objects in here using the slide tool so I can move it to this side, something like that. And then I can do the same here, double click, and then I move. I want to make sure that they are both more or less in the same width. So that looks about right so far. All right, so now I want to select these two edges in here while holding Shift, and then I can extrude using the extrusion tool. So let me just put my camera in the front, and then let's start extruding. So I'm going to extrude something almost to right there then let's move this so they can look right, like a straight line now i want to add a couple of loops one here and another here and then i want to select this one here as well and then i can move this to the top and now i can continue my extrusion here so i want to extrude another one again and then i'm going to look at this from the front something like that make sure it is in the right alignment I think that should work. And finally, I want to extrude from this position here. So let's put something like this. And then we can move it. If you look at things from the front, you can see that we are already getting something interesting right there. Actually, I'm going to move it a little bit this way. Then I want to start adding more subdivisions. I want a subdivision right in the top. I also want a subdivision here, another here, and another here, and another here. So for the last two, I can double click, double click, and then I can move them to the bottom so I have a more sharper corner in here. And then I can start shaping the model in this way here. So I'm going to select these points, and then holding Shift, I can select these other points, and then we can start moving. Right there, and these two as well. Something like that. Go to the bottom in here. Maybe go to here. Perhaps this could be something like this. So basically, I just want to shape this so it looks uh, round. I want this to be more round in here, so I'm going to select this too with holding shift, and then I can move it a little bit like this. 
All right, now I just want to add like more sharpness along the shape. So I'm going to add a subdivision in there. So I'm going to go to the lab code tool again and then click here. You can see now it's looking a little more sharper. I also want to add another subdivision in here and then I want to double click on this one and then I can move a little to the bottom, but not too much. So we don't want that much uh, sharpness in here. But I do want a little bit more subdivision in here and also a little bit more in here. And we can also use the sliding tool a little in here, in those two. So we can move it a little more, something like that. And then a little more. Now what I want is what I want to create the background of the icon. So it's going to be a rectangle. So actually let's make this entire shape a little smaller. So it's going to be something like this. And now uh, let's make sure that we can move this object to the bottom in here. And then let's enable the font shading. And then let's add some extrusion, something like that. Maybe even a little more. So let's just move a little more to the back. Then extrude more here. And then let's add some bevels in here something like this. I actually want this to be rounded, so it's gonna be more like this. And I want it to be more like a smooth transition, something like that. So actually, I want it to be a little more rounded, so maybe something like this could work. Actually, kind of like the idea of the square circle uh, effect in here. The shadow looks a little too distant, so let's enable the helper so we can see the light, and then let's move the light to this position in here. Um, so perhaps the light is also gonna be maybe closer, um, something like this, perhaps. And we can also move the object. So what we can do here is that we can make the light size bigger so it's a softer shadow, and also we can try uh, making this just a little less and then we can maybe a little closer. Now let's work up a little bit on the materials, right? Let's uh, change our background. I think maybe something it's like a little purple-ish but also gray-ish will work. And let's also work on the color for this. Um, I imagine this is gonna be something around like purple and maybe a little bright. And I want this to be an overlay and perhaps this is gonna be something like 60%. Then I want the background in here to also be an overlay, but the color could be a little more uh, like a natural purple. So I want this area here to have like some sort of like um, global illumination effect. So let's uh, go to depth layer and it's actually quite nice already, but let's change the color and let's also put this in the bottom. So for the colors, I want this to be some sort of purple color, something like that. And this one could be slightly purple, I think. Let's see. It changed the opacity. You can already see that it looks quite interesting. And uh, maybe we can move a little to here. And also I want to use a smooth transition, so it's a little more interesting the transition there. Uh, we can also use like multiply if we want to. So this is gonna be using this value here. So that could work as well. All right, so now what I want is that I want the background to be uh, a gradient as well. So let's change the opacity here to be maybe like 40. Um, and so it will be like a very soft shadow there. And then we can use a gradient as well. And this is gonna be a very similar gradient. It's gonna be like a darker color for this part and then uh, a brighter color, I think and also a smooth transition. And then um, we, can, we can move it to the top, uh, maybe a little to the front and make it bigger. Perhaps this is, needs to be a little darker and this one needs to be maybe a little more brighter, like that. We can try now changing this color here so maybe we can have more intensity. So actually I'm gonna use normal again and then I'm going to try adding more saturation, I think that's what we need. Yeah, so then for this color here, it could be a little more like this. It's actually looking kind of nice already. Um, yeah, I really like that a lot. For this, we can keep adjusting the color. So it could be something like this. Yeah, what about 40? Then we increase the brightness. So yeah, just a little bit more of uh, the coloring here. So. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so one last thing is that I want to change, well, I want to have like a Fresnel layer in here and it's gonna be a very, very subtle effect. So I want this to be maybe um, something like this. So it's more like uh, less 
opacity perhaps we can make this a little darker so it's more contrast and this one as well could be a little darker all right now that we build the first icon now we just need to start working on the last two icons so let's see how we can build something like that all right see you in the next tutorial